I'm so happy to introduce you to my beautiful, beautiful girlfriend. I love you so much. I love you so much too. <laughs> Get your drink. Mm. I love you. I love you too. You have my heart, my mind, my body, and so for as long as I live. I am forever yours, my Eileen, in this life and for all eternity. I love you. Hi sweeties, welcome back to the channel. I don't know what to say. I don't really know how to start this video. But I'm sure you already know what it's about, you read the title. Me and Eileen have decided to file for a divorce. You probably already know why, if you've been following us for the last few months. Um, I posted a video talking all about our marital problems, but mm -hmm. at that time there was still a little bit of hope. Yeah. But now we've decided that it would be healthier for both of us to be just friends. Yeah. And well, more than friends. We're, yeah, yeah. We're family. family. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't think, I don't know what it is. Like, look, I'm, okay, I know I'm low on spoons, but. When I give a strong opinion about something, genuinely, if you take it personally, like that's between you and your God. Just a reminder that I'm a rando on the internet. Okay. We're all just judging each other because we're observing each other. And it's like, who needs reality TV when I've got YouTubers? You feel me? Okay. Whatever category of human these two people are, I don't think I have anyone in my life like them. I do not like their energy. Something about them puts me on edge. I don't think I have anyone in my life who reminds me of these two people, and I don't think I could. I don't know what category they're exactly in, but it feels so fucking fake. Something about it feels so performative. And again, don't listen to me. If you disagree, fucking cool, bro. Okay. But something about these two feel so performatively fucking fake. I feel like I'm always being scammed when I watch them. It does feel that way. It feels like they're fucking scamming me and I don't know why. Except I think I know why. I think I know. It's like an intuition. Like, again, if you disagree with me, cool, bro. I'm not talking about your mom. And even if I was, like, that's between you and her. I just feel like the way people get defensive. The last time I made a video about this girl, the way people got defensive in the comments. Girl, please. Okay, fucking go talk to your therapist. Personally. Something about them always feels snake oily. And I stand by that. Now we're able to do that, I think, after some really hard work and anguish and anger. It's a shock. I mean, it's a shocking end after such a, a dreamlike romance. But, you know, it's just what has to be done. You know, it just... Yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's a shock because it's been... Things have been bad for a long time. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But when we think of how we started and yeah, that's how happy we used yeah. to be, it's it's shocking that it got to this point. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Well, I just think of the beginning and how much promise there was there and how much love. And, you know, people make mistakes. And I'm not saying the whole relationship was a mistake, but, you know, uh, it's just inevitable that we've come to this today. Yeah, yeah for sure. It's obviously very upsetting um, for us. And I know that some of you who have been following us from the beginning will be upset too, and um, I'm sorry for that. I never wanted to upset you. And also, I know that there are a lot of people- I feel like it's a little inappropriate to like talk to your audience like, hey, I know you're disappointed, I got a divorce. It's like, that's what I think is creepy. That's what I think is inappropriate, is like they're playing into the parasociality between them and their audience, which makes, me, which makes it scream as fake. Like, what does their divorce have to do with their audience? Like, maybe that's just me. Because I know when someone has a divorce, everyone's going to talk about it, which, look, we're talking about it. So that makes sense to me. But I'm a content creator. You're observing a person. We're just observing the content. But for the content creator themselves to say to their audience, I'm sorry I never meant to hurt you over my divorce, 
why are you playing into that parasociality so strong? That feels super inappropriate to me personally. Like, no offense to my audience. Like, you're not in my marriage. My marriage, like, you can feel a way about my marriage, but, like, you're not in my marriage. And I don't care if you're hurt by my marriage. <laughs> like, what? Like, that doesn't even make sense. That's like saying, like, hey, guys, I'm having an argument with my sister right now. I, I know that's hard for you. It's like, why are you? That's inappropriate. But also, if your marriage is about your audience, which is why they feel fake, it almost feels like the relationship was for the audience. That's why I have sussy baka vibes when it comes to them. It feels like their marriage is for you. And I think that's why it's creepy. Kay says, or Teal says, I think they're both in on it though. I agree with that 100%, which is why I don't like really, I, I called them toxically, mutually toxic and their audience was so mad at me. They're like, Julie is a victim. Julie is a victim. They're both victims of the, their own narcissism and I'm over it. People who follow us because of the age difference and who mm -hmm. thought, we were an example that age gap relationships can work. And uh, I just wanted to say to those people that please don't be disillusioned because of us breaking up. Ah, so it's about proving that their type of relationship can be successful. I really resent that idea from humans, though I understand it, where it's like, well, show me how it works for somebody else. And it, it, and it can work for some people. I personally don't believe in like age gaps to this extreme working out when the person is young, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, like, you know what I mean? It's not exactly immoral to try it out. It's just sussy in a way. It's like, what do you guys have in common? What are you doing? And also that lends to some, you know what I mean? Like, again, it depends on your goal. But obviously, if their goal was to have a long term relationship that lasted, they probably would have had to know a lot more about their own individual values before trying to get into this marriage. You know what I mean? I don't know. It seems weird. Like, I get it. I do. Like, oh, look at this person. Their marriage failed. Like, that's how I know it can't be successful. It's like, I think there's some reason to that. Like, I do. I think an example is always good. But you know what's a great example? Like, also knowing you could be the exception. But the thing is, is like, you probably won't be. And realizing that is really difficult. You know what I mean? We're not breaking up because of the age difference. At least in my opinion, that was never, never, ever the problem. It's something else completely mm. separate from that. And well, I would argue that the age difference is sort of the... Her partner being fucking useless at her old age with money and taking advantage of Julia is the reason the age relationship is the red flag. Because why would a person of her maturity find Julia interesting or compatible with her unless she was equally immature and useless as a young person right and I mean that in the nicest way possible like except if she was sort of somebody who didn't age gracefully like with maturity do you know what I'm saying like the age gap relationship is a red flag because the question is why is an older person on the same page as somebody who's younger and why is a younger person think they're on the same page as somebody who's older why don't you have the wisdom to know you're going to be different in your 60s unless you think you won't be? You know what I'm saying? So the age is a factor. It just is a factor because you have to put into consideration why the age being a difference is the issue. Do you know what I'm saying? Does, I know I'm brain foggy today, but I feel like that makes sense. In my opinion. So, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there because I know there will be people saying, oh, see, I knew it wouldn't work with the huge age difference. And that wasn't the problem at all. Well, I, I mean, as you know, I, I kind of have a different perspective, slightly different, though I do want to say, have the courage of your conviction in your relationship. If it's age gap, if it's no gap, just have the courage of it. And if it lasts forever, that's fantastic. And if it doesn't, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. But in terms of age gap, I feel that on my end, that, you know, you would think, many people would think that the older person would have the maturity, maturity to know whether going into a relationship with somebody 37 years younger is a very smart... Oh my God, 37 years younger? 37 years younger? ...thing to do. And I can say with, you know, the greatest regret that for me, I wasn't a healthy enough person to recognize that this person was quite a lot younger than me. And... Oh, okay. And I, my lack of suitability for a long-term relationship or for any relationship really is what affected us, you know, largely in a negative way. Okay.
And had this been a, with a person who was my age, she might have, you know, seen sooner than I could that I wasn't a really viable candidate. Does that make sense? Like, oh. oh, yeah. Oh, she, <laughs> she said a girl. Oh, you're being kind of hard on yourself saying that you're not a viable candidate for a relationship. You're a great person, but some of the decisions you made. Yeah, but I... Were- I wasn't the person I should have been for you. It would have been a healthier relationship if I I wasn't flawed. I know a lot of people... Everybody's flawed, but it's about the choices you make. Yeah. And that, I think, has nothing to do with someone's age. Well... Stupid. Just, people are so dumb. I don't think it's... I'm not blaming it on my age. What I mean is, I hadn't worked through these issues before in other relationships. Yeah, duh. Come on, Julia, keep up. Because presumably some of this stuff has come up, and it has, you know. But I wasn't psychologically in a place to recognize that I was going to affect you negatively, you know, by the choices I made, which is what your point is. And I agree with you on that, but I, you know, I wasn't in a healthy space, you know, to, to see, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's not like I consciously took advantage of you, but I think my inability to be very healthy, I think really affected us negatively, you know, and I feel really terrible, terrible about that. And we, we've been over this a lot and, you know, we're able to speak about it, you know, because we are family, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I feel that. And I'm not somebody that gets close to many people, but you are so in my heart, you know, just as you were from the first day. But it's it's not the romance. It's it's the family, the love, the friendship. Mm-hmm. It, I think a lot of people get very close to people and think the only way they can keep them in their life and close is by dating them. And I think that's interesting. You know what I mean? Um like, again, I'm really grateful, I think. Like, I'm going to catch up with my bestie this weekend, and I'm so excited because we haven't had a lot of time to talk. Like, our schedules are so busy, and she's on an opposite time zone than me. And, like, I'm really stoked to be able to talk to her. And we've known each other since we were literally, like, nine years old. She's the oldest person in my life other than my siblings. And she's, like, a sister to me, right? And I think about her, and I think about, like, how long we go without, like, talking Like really having a phone call, not just like Snapchat, but like really having a phone call. And it's like nothing ever changes. But also like I can't wait to hear the update because I know like we'll have updates for each other. But it's, you know, it's something I'm so grateful for that she, you know, she knows that our friendship is an intimacy that is greater than like other relationships, but it's different than like a romantic relationship. I think what I'm hearing from them is almost like they should have been friends instead of been lovers. But I think a lot of people think they have to marry their friends in a weird way. Does that make sense? Like, you know, you could have just stayed friends, but like they're like, oh, that's not close enough. But like, but if you're like family and you're intimate, it almost feels like friendship would have just been better for them. But you know, what do I know? means everything to me. Oh, know? for sure. I mean, you mean everything to me. And I want you to be happy more than anything, you know. I want you to be happy too. And I, I'm always going to be here for you. You know that. Yeah, yeah. And I really appreciate that. And, and you are, you know. And we have pets together, you know. <laughs> yeah, we have still have to co-parent. Yeah. yeah, and that's great, you know. Yeah, and I feel like we probably should have taken that step quite a while ago. Because yeah. I feel like lately we haven't been great to one another yeah, and it, yeah. it just hasn't been healthy but at the same time i feel like i needed time to process and to sort of like forgive and get over what yeah. i was feeling because i think yeah. if we had just broken up when things first happened yeah we probably wouldn't talk anymore yeah yeah and yeah, this way just wanted that yeah yeah this way i feel i there was a time when i was really angry yes at you. yes very angry yeah, and i, I was being yeah. very unpleasant to you as well mm. and uh i'm completely over that now i yeah, I have yeah. truly like forgave the things that happened because I know I don't agree with the way you acted in some ways, yeah. but at the same time, I know that your intentions were never bad. You never yeah. set out mm. to do anything and, bad. And there was interesting, interesting, interesting. If they had broken up before, they wouldn't have talked, but since they stayed together, now they can remain. Well, we'll see how they are in six months to 12 years, right? But interesting, you know, sometimes it's better just to let the moment die. I don't know. It's hard. It's really hard for me to st- keep it like an ex in my life. I can't even imagine it like in an intimate way because people I know who still have exes in their lives, they're usually not as close to them. They are in their lives, but they're not like good friends with them. So in my brain, I'm like, well, why are you in my life? Like, I don't need you in my life just so we can say we were nice to each other. It feels like it feels really fake 
But I think with them, there's a little bit of codependency probably involved too that is bringing them to want to stay in each other's life. I'm assuming. I don't know. Hannah says, so what the hell happened? Did I miss it? Um, It's in the last video. So the last video we covered, I have a video on it. They talked about basically like there was financial infidelity. There was like a lot of lying and a lot of, I think, miscommunication, you know, a lot of trauma. So um, I'm not going to rehash it here, but I do have a video on it. Let's, Lexi says, what does it feel like they're saying? The, why does it feel like they're saying these things for the first time on camera? Or did they rehearse and they're secretly good at acting? You know, to me, it sounds very scripted. Like they're trying to save face, but also trying to be intimate with the audience. It feels very YouTube couple. Like genuinely and with peace and love. Um, I learned the hard way. Like definitely don't have your relationship on the internet. You know, I think your relationship should take priority. Like Papa and Mama Guts said something really profound. And I know like it will stay with me because it's really profound. He said that one of the reasons they stopped making as frequent content together is because they almost stopped talking in real life to save it for the podcast, which took away all of their intimate talking time. And that is something that happens. When you have a, a relationship that's on the internet, you will save conversations for stream, which means you will lose out on intimacy time with your partner. And that is true. And like, to be honest, it's it's a fascinating realization because people don't know they're doing it. I'm so proud of Papa Gut and Mama Gut for figuring that out so quickly, you know, because it is something that people learn the hard way. So props to them. Obviously, I love their relationship and I'm just like so happy they figured that out. But yeah, like it's weird to think. So when I see these YouTubers that make their relationship the content, it does feel like it's for us and it's not for them. Like Jared and Sh Shan remind me sort of similarly where I feel like too much of their relationship is for the world, even though I'm sure that's not accurate. But I do like it's same with family vloggers. I feel like their family time is for the internet and not for themselves. You know what I mean? I just, I'm not a fan of it. It's a time when you weren't sure if I was just, you know, bad or, you know what I mean? Like, but I do feel the difference in you and it has made all the world a difference. Yeah. And, yeah, and now I feel like we can really move on and be family with, you know, and still have each other, in yeah, the, yeah, still yeah. have each other in our lives. Yeah, yeah. And I feel it's based in health. And that's what's really important to me because so much of our relationship from from my end, mm -hmm. you know, after it after it evolved from the beautiful love that that it was to include the more day to day, you know, that's the other thing too. These type of dynamics talk about how in love we are. We're so in love. We're so in love. It was so lovely. It was all love. It's like love is their drug. I'm not into it. Um, you know the day to day life that I forget my point. Wow, good job. <laughs> That that it's, showing. It, it just feels so weird to film. I know. I, I feel so like numb and weird. Like I thought I would cry and yeah, stuff. But I just too. feel like yeah, yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Okay. Um, it feels almost like like I know I failed in the relationship, and that's the problem. Oh, I have to in many ways. I mean, I, I can't name any. <laughs> she failed by picking you. And I realized I fully own that it was me. You know what I mean? <laughs> What's that Taylor Swift thing? It's, it's me. me. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. I'm the problem. No, I mean, I I should have woke. Gaming says, I just see two people who don't have very many others in their life and they're lonely. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, I agree with that. Which is heartbreaking. To wake sooner. And yeah. I yeah, should have yeah, yeah. instead of mm -hmm. making things unhealthy and that that's on me like you, you see i'm not trying to like blow smoke up your butt <laughs> you know what i mean like but i i think it's really important to really understand what happened in this relationship mm. and it wasn't like both partners were so wacky you know that they couldn't sort it out you're a very healthy person you know you're a very healthy person you have you know anxiety issues i'm so i'm sorry earphone users oh fuck i just screamed i'm so sorry I wasn't emotionally prepared for her to say that. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Healthy people don't date toxic people. <laughs> Healthy people don't date toxic people. How healthy she could she have been? 
How healthy could she have been? <laughs> Which are part of life. But you are, are by and large, your mother has, oh, has helped fuck. you to be, Ooh. you know, a very healthy, stable person. And I think that's fantastic. I mean, with money, you're really good. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Woo! Good. But in terms of the, thematically, the main themes that destroyed our relationship, it was me and my depression and my- Stop, stop, stop. No. Fucking canceled. Absolutely not. Takes two to make a toxic relationship. Takes two. Inability to make healthy choices, like you said, you know what I mean? And had I known that, I didn't know that about myself, you know? How did I get to 60 and not know that? But I didn't. And I know some people out there will be like, yeah, sure. Um, but what can I say? You know, it is what it is. But but I do want to say, too, about an age gap relationship, I still, you know, one of the things I love about you is you're younger and all that you brought to our relationship as a younger person. And I know... Man, these old people who never fucking grew up dating people 30 years younger than them so they don't have to... Conversely, that you like what I brought to some of the, you know, a relationship in some ways about being an older person. It wasn't a failure of that. That was a part of our joy together. But I do think that I should have known better about being with someone younger, that I had greater responsibility to be, you know, to be on the, you know, lookout for my own shortcomings. And I failed in that, you know, and I think that's how relationships fail sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, it kind of sucks, but I think it's for the best. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. We're going to be divorced. Yeah. Maybe we haven't started procedures or anything yet because we wanted to talk to you first. Ma'am? <laughs> Ma'am? We didn't start getting divorced first because we wanted to talk to you first? Ma'am? <laughs> what? This is so inappropriate. This is so inappropriate. Uh, I think a lot during our troubles, I think I should have talked to you sooner than I did because... I'm sorry. <laughs> Are we dating? Whoa. Yo, I should have talked to you sooner than I did. I'm sorry. Are we dating? Guys, are we in a relationship with Julia and what's her name? Um, ma'am? This is so, this should be studied. This is so inappropriate. Because I think some people were upset that I didn't because they were yeah. following us from yeah, the beginning. Yeah. But at the same time, it, it's hard, isn't it? Because it's like my job to share everything because I... I have this channel and that's like my job and a commitment I have with y'all but at the same time it's my personal life yeah, right, and yeah. some things are painful and then you have the most toxic audience if they felt in any way entitled to your fucking relationship or where you are in your life oh my god oh my god I know which bubble she's talking about I do I know which bubble they're talking about it's the, it is the people that follow their life and they're like, why didn't you tell us you guys were having problems? Like, oh my gosh, like you owe it to your audience to be transparent about your relationship. Like, no, you do not. You do not owe it to your, like, no. No, you don't. But like, there are some people that feel like people, like, and I understand certain contexts for sure. Like, I kind of think if you're like a Christian couple and you guys are having swinger parties, that not that people are entitled to your life, but I'm I understand in that context why their audience would be like, whoa, you need to tell us if we're following a Christian couple that does swinging. I kind of understand that. But in this context, like I don't even understand like the audience thinking they're entitled to knowing. You know what I mean? Like what? You also upset people by oversharing. Yeah, right. Like some yeah. people didn't like that shared yeah. our problems. Yeah. But some people thought I didn't share it soon enough. So it's, you can't please everybody. Yeah. Right? Well, it's not about, that's what I'm saying. The audience should never have had a say. It doesn't give, who cares if your fucking audience wanted more, wanted less. Like you need to decide what you want to share. Yeah. I, you know, I did my best. Yeah. I think you did what was humanly possible. People love love and they love to see real love and they saw our love and they love that. They oh. fell in love with that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was beautiful. Yeah, when, yeah. when it was good, it was oh, beautiful. Yeah. I, I still say this, like, when we first met and uh, when we got married and that whole time, it, it was the best, best time of my life. It was really beautiful. Yeah. Discord says this is the same bubble, bubble Bria and Chrissy were in. Literally, these lesbians be so toxic, bro. I love the gays. We're so toxic. Like, what? Jesus, bro. Yeah. Oh, and I think it was the happiest I've ever been, like, you know, our love and the hope yeah. for the future. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And because we had such a great love in the beginning. I'm going to get triggered every time they say love. 
love, love. Our love was so great. Our love was so great. Our love was so great. Well, not that great, girl. You guys were literally toxic. Not that great, girl. Love ain't enough. Love ain't enough. I think it was hard for either of us to let go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, the anger definitely, was natural, you know. Yeah, we definitely held on for way longer yeah. than... Yeah, I mean, I've gone through so many things, like fear of losing you and then knowing that... Did I, you, though? Like, oh, yeah. I feel like... Did you, though? Did you... Were you afraid of losing me? Girl, have you not talked about this prior to pressing play? Inappropriate. You didn't, like, care as much as I thought you did? But I did. I just wasn't able... Because there was so much that, you know, so many times that I, I said, like, if you do this differently, it will be better. Yeah. And, uh, and you didn't. So to me, I was being under the impression that, that it, like, I didn't, didn't really yeah. give no, a No, it wasn't about... It was my capacity to love in a healthy way that wasn't there, you know? I... But, like, were you even, like, upset when things started going south? Like, yeah, I was. I, I did, but I, what I did was an unhealthy accommodation to that, which is... I'm sorry, who earlier said it sounds like they're having this conversation for the first time? Um, ma'am? Sent me further into myself, you know what I mean? That's what I mean about uh, dysfunctional adaptations, that, that I was full of them, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't turn to drinking, I didn't turn to drugs, I just went deeper in myself, which pulled me away from you, which I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Fishy says that I'm afraid of losing you sounds like so codependent. Bro, that's what I'm saying. I, I've been really thinking about this. All kinds of friendships, relationships, even with parents, like I talked to Rashad yesterday. It would be very a red flag to me if my mother was like, you can't move away from me. You can't go to Europe. You can't leave us. You can't do this. Like, um, I'm sorry, bitch. I love you, but like I'm living my own life. You know, there's something very toxic about that. Same thing with like friends or anyone who tells you like you have to live your life around my life. Um, unless we're dating, bitch, I don't think so. Now, let me let me clarify. In a healthy relationship, there would be balance in some appropriate circumstances in which you would live your life for or around your kid. Like, obviously, if you have a child, you should live with that child and you should care for that child to the best of your ability or co-parent with your former partner or whoever um, in the healthiest way for the child, right? The child takes precedent, okay? Obviously. But in most circumstances, it, you know, adult to adult, it is inappropriate for our parents to hold us hostage, our friends to hold us hostage, or our ex-girlfriends or wives. I'm afraid I was going to lose you. I was afraid you would never talk to me again if we broke up. It's like, yeah, bitch. That's my right to move away from my... That's why when my friends and family, when my siblings are like, hey, I don't want to talk to the family right now. I love you. I will wait for you forever. I will always wait for my inner circle forever. But if you don't want to talk right now, I'm not going to chase you. You have the right to consent to no longer speaking. And I'm not going to chase you. It is not my job to be codependent with you or to force you into speaking to me, right? It is your job to decide when you want to come back into my life. So when my siblings are like, hey, I'm going to take a break from the family. I'm like, love you. Call me later. Send me a gift when you're ready. And then I just chill and I wait. I don't send messages. I don't email. I don't do nothing because I know what it's like to have been that girl in her 20s who needed a break from my family. And when I was like, don't contact me, leave me alone. And they would send me messages the, like, hey, I miss you. I love you when you're ready to talk. Like, no, bitch, I told you I would contact you later. Don't, don't leave me alone. I want to disconnect, you know? And so I really feel like this is a consent issue. It's about respecting people's right to move away from you. But I think there is this idea of like, I'm going to Naruto chase Sasuke into the wilderness, even though Sasuke said, please leave me alone, bitch. I'm on a journey. Naruto's like, nah, bitch, you can't be on a journey. Kind of inappropriate kind of inappropriate if you ask me you know what I'm saying like kind of inappropriate you know so I feel like I, I agree with you fishy that like sometimes when I hear those things of like I was so afraid to lose you I was afraid to never see you again I'm like mm, feels codependent which is not the same as interdependent sometimes I think I'm just an organism that just will never learn you know oh well, don't say that no I mean, I mean I really feel that I, I definitely feel like we we ex at least like if we don't feel things differently we express sadness in a different way because I feel like I've been um I've had some really like dark sad moments yeah, about yeah, everything yeah, like yeah, I've yeah, been I mentally I've been through a lot because of yeah, our relationship you don't think that I and have I, the same kind of anguish yeah well I pretty quickly understood that I shouldn't be in the relationship I think that I wasn't good for it and that just 
you know, I don't know. I started to feel I didn't deserve the relationship anymore, and I withdrew. But I'll, I've never loved anyone as much as I've loved you. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure of it. I'm absolutely, I've said this. I've never loved anyone the way I loved you, so I withdrew myself from you. Hmm. From the very start. that Of that, I'm sure. And and also the love that I feel still today, like is like this has been unlike any breakup I've had. You know, mine haven't been all that dramatic. You know what I mean? Oh, I don't tear yet. Oh, I will just get upset because sometimes I f- I wonder if you even like felt the same way as oh, I did. Oh, I do. This should not be on the internet, bro. I mean, I get it. Everyone's so hungry for authenticity. This ain't even it. If there's a camera on, there's a wall up. Of course I did. You know, well, I say, you know, I did. Yes, I did. I absolutely did. You know, and I still feel a powerful love for you. I really, maybe I don't ex- express love very well. But yeah, no, I, it really upsets me. It troubles me that you, that you don't know if I loved you. I mean, I gotta say, Juliet, you're just the sweetest thing in the world. You are. You're an incredibly sweet human being. Oh, so are you. Oh, I mean, you're so kind and loving and everything. It's just, yeah, I just, I just, my anxiety couldn't cope with yeah, the stuff yeah. you I know. <laughs> now, remember the guitar thing? You probably didn't even tell them when I bought like three guitars. No, didn't didn't tell them. Oh, I'm like, you know, I fully admit that I'm crazy. You know, in some don't so, don't say you're crazy. No, but, no, but no, but I am, and I mean, you know, I'm joking. You don't have to make better choices, though. This is just a really sad day. You know, it's a, it's an incredibly sad day, and you know, I will forever feel I've I've done you wrong in some really sad ways. Oh, it's okay. No, no, I'm just saying. No, I. You know what I hate about Julia? She. Fake comforts. What's her name? What's the girl? What's the old lady's name? Elaine. She fake comforts her. She like, oh, every time she tries to hold herself accountable, Julia fucks it over. That's why I think Julia is just as toxic. Every time. What's her name? Elaine? Arraine? Arraine? Every time Elaine or whatever her name is literally tries to take accountability in any capacity, Julia stops her from doing it. That's fake fucking love. That is fake superficial fucking love. Eileen? Eileen. Let Eileen take, hello, Eileen, let her take responsibility, but she can't. And that's what builds a codependent relationship. And that's what like fake love is. Real love, real love allows you space to take accountability and is still there. Fake love tells you it's okay, blah, blah, blah. It's no problem. You know what I mean? Look, I know you might hear me say like, hey, people are on a journey. You can still hold people accountable. You know what I mean? Like you can hold people accountable and still love them. It's giving them space to take that accountability that is so necessary. Without blaming, people need to take accountability, which means when they say, I should have known better, that's not your job to then go, oh no, you should have known better. Be like, shut the fuck up, shut up. And let people have respond, like have a sense of an accountability with themselves. You know, Julia doesn't do that. She fucks it every time. Eileen has any moment of introspection. Julia's like, no, don't be introspective. Wizard says, I feel like Julia is being condescending with her a lot. Oh my God. So condescending. So condescending. Maiden says, Julia is heavy codependent. I hope she can recognize her own part in this mess. Well, she's fucking not going to with Eileen sitting there going, you're perfect. You did nothing wrong. It's really important. I'm not saying that for the sympathy vote. You know what I mean? So if you are a long time follower from since, you know, we got together before that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. please don't be upset because we're still going to be in each other's lives yeah we're, yeah oh absolutely yeah we're yeah. family like you're my best friend you know you you are yeah and again please don't think i'm gonna say this with peace and love there is a part of me that is so intimately only available for my partner for my husband i could never imagine having somebody in my life that would need me like again maybe I'm just this type of category and I am like my husband comes first my my relationship comes first I was taught like that my family does that all my successful relationships I love prioritize their relationship over everybody else and that's the kind of relationship I prefer so I'm in a relationship where we prioritize each other over everybody else in our lives and I'm really happy with that right couldn't be happier if I had an ex in my life That ex, this ex is not going to allow me space to have that intimate relationship with my partner because they're going to assume they have priority in the relationship. 
That's why you have to have friends and family that back the fuck off. Put down boundaries. I love you so much. But if you tried to come between me and my marriage, see you in hell, girlfriend. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But I guarantee you in this kind of relationship, I couldn't even imagine a reality where they don't try to fuck with each other. Because you have to understand, like, if you give yourself fully to a partner, and maybe they'll never do that, so it won't matter. When your ex calls you at 3 a.m. and they need you, you know what I mean? Like, who are you going to pick? You're going to pick your ex? Now, maybe there might be an appropriate situation for this. Once in a blue moon, somebody's having a true tragedy and they need you. But I'm telling you, I cannot imagine, maybe that's just me, I can't imagine a reality where Julia or Eileen get into a relationship and the other person doesn't try to nudge their way into it. Maiden says they are afraid of looking at their own insanity if really uncovering the why beneath their codependent behavior. I don't even know if they are aware of the full extent of it. I don't know. I don't know. That age gap relationships are bad because ours didn't work out. And Jesus, that goes without saying, please don't think lesbian relationships are right. bad. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. On that video that I did talking about our problem. I saw Jordan Peterson trying to make the argument that lesbian relationships will fail at 75%. Of, I think because he said the data shows that because like women initiate divorce and women are unhappy. Look, y'all are going to keep getting divorced if you keep like codependently getting with people and if you keep ending up with people you're settling for. It's not that deep. It doesn't have to do with lesbian or black or white or men or Christian or Muslim. Look, at the end of the day, people be unhappy, people leave. Okay. Problem. Someone commented something like, oh, I knew that wouldn't work out, two women together. Oh, God. Oh, God. Who said that? <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> said that? That has nothing to do with it whatsoever. Yeah, not at all. Yeah, so I think that's going to be it for today. I didn't know how to begin this video and I don't know how to end it. Yeah, yeah. It's just so numbing. Um, but we'll keep you updated. Uh, please be kind. This is a difficult time for us. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching and for... Well, for having watched all along yeah, yeah. our journey, it was a, a beautiful journey. You know, yeah, we had ups yeah. and downs, but it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And yeah, yeah. I don't regret it at all. Yeah, I don't either. It was I regret my behavior, but I don't regret it. Okay, so that's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Have and a I always love you. I just want to say that. Oh, my yeah. God, you made me cry. Oh, it's okay. I always love you, too. Yeah, I just want you to know that I see you and I will they have autism like what is this like is this neurodivergency I don't like it I don't like anything this feels so inappropriate this feels like I would have done something like this like maybe in my 20s or something like that or maybe not but like it feels weird bro it feels weird yeah it feels really unhealthy I know someone out there is like this is so healthy this is so great nah I just see red flags bro my opinion if you don't like it go talk to your mom about it I will always love you Oh my god. Stop it. Okay, don't. My baby. <clears throat> oh god. <laughs> I can cry. Cam Cam says it seems so fake. That's what I mean. It feels very fucking fake. Oh, you okay? I'm okay. All right. Bye bye, bye. everybody. Bye. Oh, it feels like it's the end, doesn't it? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. No, they were. It's almost like, oh, we're still filming. It's still like a thing. Yeah. And now yeah, they would yeah, turn off the yeah. camera. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Oh, darling, it's okay, my baby. Oh, it's all right, darling. It's okay, and it's okay to be upset. Oh, my darling. <laughs> oh. Uh, I'm so silly. No, you're not. You're not silly. Do you want to sue? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. He's like the end of an era, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, don't give up on love. It's no, worth it. You it's know? worth it. Even if he oh. ends like this. It's still worth it because it was the best time yeah, ever. Yeah, re really, really, really was. It, was. it was really beautiful. Yeah, I'll always remember the extraordinary love that we've had. For oh. sure. Oh. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Oh. That's a good Did you point. guys watch the Lex Friedman talk? Boring. Holy fuck, it was so boring. Jesus. Anyways. Um, okay. Ooh, that was, that was rough. That was rough. That was rough. I'm sorry. I know I sound judgy and I know all my toxic, <laughs> all my toxic people are going to say, you just don't understand. You've never been in love that way. Girl, you think I've never had a messy breakup with an ex? 
unhealthy, be unhealthy, be unhealthy. You know what I mean? It's just so inappropriate. You know what I mean? To have this on the internet. But, you know, peace and love. Peace and love. We'll see how they are in a year or two. But it's not the end of their toxicity. You know? Good luck to both of them on their journey, though. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool. Da, 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 da.